Six months ago, we met our new boat for the first time. Everything. We bought this boat sight unseen during the first wave of COVID. It was located halfway around the world from us, and we had no idea when we'd finally lay eyes on our new home. All we knew is that when we did finally get there, there was a lot of work ahead of us. After three years sailing in Europe, we wanted to go farther afield. But we didn't feel that our 28-foot beauty was the boat for the job. So we started looking for a real blue water cruiser. Our capital at the time was next to nothing. We did, however, have a secret weapon, Aladino. After studying boat building in Switzerland for three years and doing a massive rebuild on our first boat, there's not a lot that phases Aladino. Oh, I love this. And it's just a matter of time until it starts deteriorating. So we are quite happy we're getting rid of all of this. So we started looking for a refit project, something that would be worth all the work put into it. And that brought us to this Cape George 36, a gorgeous design that we'd long admired. Built in Port Townsend, Washington, these boats are found all over the world in remote corners, carrying their owners safely and comfortably through whatever the ocean throws at them. But this particular one was in need of a lot of work. Perfect. We bargained and cajoled and insisted, and eventually we got it for $11,000. It was nearly all the money we had at the time, but we believed it was worth it. It took almost a year before we could actually set eyes on our new boat. But in 2021, with ever-varying COVID restrictions, we finally found a way into the States, and the project began. The work list was extensive. And now, six months later, it's still not done. But unfortunately, we've got to leave to reset our visas and come back after a few months. So let's review what these past six months have looked like. We just arrived here after a three-week journey from Switzerland. Magic Carpet 2 blew us away on first sight. She looked excellent. She had new cushions and too many sail bags to even know what to do with. The paint all looked relatively new. The whole boat felt impressive and sturdy. But we already knew that there were some big problems lurking under the surface, and our resident boat builder's careful eye confirmed them all. It completely turns into mush. The biggest problem was the bulwarks. The bulwarks are these little tow rails which rise up above the decks here. There's a fiberglass hull that runs up to the cap rail here on the outside. And then on the interior, they sort of added big chunks of wood to beef them up, make them stronger and thicker. Now the big problem here is that inevitably water gets in and the bulwarks start to rot, which then spreads to the deck beams inside and to all of the interior joinery and cabinetry and just everything, it goes everywhere. Rebuilding the bulwarks with a new design and replacing the rotten deck beams was priority number one. It took a long time. It may seem simple, but every step takes forever. I mean, for example, just removing this teak tow rail took two days as we very carefully excavated it from sealant and screws. Teak is expensive, and breaking this tow rail would be a big financial hit. But we finally got it, and the work continued. First, demolish the old bulwarks. Here you can see it very clearly, and you see how water is spreading. Next, open up the decks.
Next, figure out which deck beams had to be replaced. Next, we had to figure out how to make new deck beams. After a lot of trial and error, we made this jig and our beam production factory began. We ended up replacing 24 deck beams with this beautiful Alaska yellow cedar that we selected ourselves at the local woodworker's paradise, Eden Saw. And to complete the picture, we used a dark mahogany for the blocking. The blocking fits between the deck beams, stiffening everything up. But each block had to be custom fit, a slow and tedious process. But when they were all done and coated with epoxy, the yellow cedar beams and the mahogany blocks sure looked nice together. Oh man, I am so happy. When we return, we'll close up the decks and rebuild the bulwarks. For now, this is as far as we got. But the beams and the blocking are only one part of the story. Inside the boat, there was also a refit raging away at full speed. The V-Birth got completely demolished so that we could redesign the chain locker to fit more chain. That was actually a huge job with a lot of trial and error. Let's get stainless steel chain. It's more slippery. Oh, yeah. Grease the for the balsa. Project done. We've got a reasonable way to store our chain. We also refinished the whole space with new fiberglass to get rid of the ugly and moldy roving layer. The V-Birth is closest to completion of any other part of this boat. It actually could have been finished entirely, and the only reason why we didn't finish it is because we didn't have paint yet. We have this very specific paint we want to get, and due to COVID supply issues, we haven't been able to get it yet. All of the structural components for the V-Birth platform are ready to go, prepped and sanded and fared and everything down below. They're ready to slot into place as soon as we have some white paint. It's gonna look pretty wonderful. Moving aft just a bit, we have the head. The head here has undergone quite a bit of progress, uh, even though it is not visible at the moment. I don't know, but um, knowing Aladino, he might redesign this whole thing. So we have taken out the holding tank, we have rebuilt some of the floor timbers which were compromised and cracked. Now it is all new down there and we have 
an incredible amount of space which will become shower sump, bilge, pump, uh, bilge pumps, it's like a forward bilge. So next time around we are building something to accommodate a composting toilet over here, a little wall so we don't fall off and uh, we do want to try to have a shower. So the idea for the shower is to use this space here. So picture that most of the time there is just a nice cabinet with a huge rectangular sink here. And instead, when we want to have a shower, we push it in on its slides and it opens up this, uh, which is the best spot to have a shower in. And we're also going to give it the same treatment as in the V-Birth with new fiberglass for a cleaner and smoother finish. But that's for next time. Moving into the salon, we haven't done too much here. So apart from the deck beams, probably the least has happened in the salon. We do want to figure out a solution for having a larger table, probably sticking with the drop down arrangement, but just adding a leaf. Other than that, we want to add a heater. We maybe want to improve the way that these hatches are constructed. And then of course the cabinetry, we have functional cabinetry that we have removed in one piece so that it can go back in. Perhaps we want to build something a bit more appealing, but that's for a future decision. Back here, the engine room has seen the most changes. The entire engine is gone, for starters, and the whole place has been pretty significantly cleaned up. In the galley, we removed our old and somewhat dangerous propane stove, but there's still lots more to do here. Once again, that'll wait for next time. Obviously, the quarter berth here will need lots of work. It will stay fairly similar. We may play a bit with the length, um, the bulkhead back there might move, and the chart table um, is an ice box at the moment, which we are changing into drawers. Um, and an actual chart table with like all the pens and screwdrivers and it will more become just storage of daily used items. Returning outside, there's two more big projects that we completed shortly before leaving. The first was a total refit up at the bow to get rid of some rotten beams up there. Ho oh, ho! Do you notice anything? Well, half the beam, or not half, but the first layer of the beam came yeah. off with it. Because, as we suspected, that they were delaminating.
One of the last big projects we did was to repair this large beam that supports the aft end of the cabin top. It's a vital structural piece, but the ends were rotten. Replacing it completely was a daunting prospect because it would require some very delicate work, and if anything went wrong, we could jeopardize some other critical pieces. So with the help of an architect friend, we came up with a different solution. A flitch beam, basically a composite beam of wood with a metal plate sandwiched in between. It would be even stronger than the original, but meant that we wouldn't have to completely replace the old beam. done. This is the last project we are completing this time around. So this is where we're leaving Magic Carpet 2. It's been six months of work, 24 new deck beams, over 50 new blocks, a major interior overhaul, lots of days spent planning and researching, and 34 episodes made about the entire journey. There's still a long way to go, but when it's all done, think of just how far we'll be able to go then. Join us next week for some adventures in the Netherlands on board a traditional Dutch sailboat. And as always, huge thank you for watching. Extra big thanks to our patrons for making all of these videos possible, and an extra extra big thanks to these folks for always going the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced every single Friday. See you all next week. <laughs>